Brothers and sisters, today's Feast of the Presentation is really an incredible moment in the life of our God who became human uh, in the life of Jesus. 40 days after his birth in Bethlehem and the whole Christmas mystery, we um, celebrate this Feast of the Presentation of the Lord in the temple in Jerusalem. And according to the Jewish tradition and the law at the time, and Jesus is born into a particular culture and place and obviously the whole Jewish tradition, a prophetic tradition, uh, which told of his coming. Um, Mary and Joseph, uh, obedient, pious Jews who follow the tradition and in following their tradition, they will ultimately come to the fulfillment of it in, in, in the new covenant that their son, Jesus, will establish. And so anyway, the presentation temple marks 40 days after which a woman was to go for her ritual purifications and also for the consecration of the of the child in the temple. And so in this moment, we have Jesus being consecrated to the Lord, his humanity. I mean, he's already consecrated from the moment of his conception in the womb of Mary, when the word of God became flesh and took on that sacred humanity of Mary from Mary from well, biologically from Mary, <laughs> stitched and knitted by the Holy Spirit in her womb, the word of God um, would have consecrated the humanity of Christ. And so Jesus is truly the word of God, the, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, um, who is the, the subject of the person of Christ, you could say, who is Christ. And so anyway, going on and on as usual. So <laughs> the point is, is that Jesus is consecrated in the temple. And because of that, today the Catholic Church celebrates today as a great day to honor and remember and pray for uh, consecrated souls, souls who have decided to, to commit and consummate all their lives towards God in terms of by following Christ in his own life, uh, his, a close imitation to Christ through his poverty, his obedience and his chastity. And so these souls, men and women throughout the church live this wholehearted desire whether it's religious or or other uh, consecrated souls in, in other co community-like settings in the church where they want to serve God and serve his people with a free and, and poor, obedient, chaste heart. Something's really significant about today's feast is a little backstory in the Old Testament that in the book of Ezekiel, the great prophet Ezekiel, owing to the infidelity of the people, the glory, the Shekai Yahweh, the great presence of God in the temple left and left towards the east. And, and so the temple then became abandoned in one sense of the presence of God. And for the first time in this presentation of the child Jesus in the temple, the presence of God is returning. But it's returning in, in a most incredible way. It's, it's returning not just in the spiritual presence, but in an incarnated presence in the person of Jesus Christ and the glory of the God is being, is entering his temple again. And so this is a very significant moment because since the glory and the presence left the temple, it has now arrived back again. And Simeon, the great prophet who is waiting long because the Holy Spirit has revealed to him, has revealed to him that he will see his sal the salvation. Of that they've been yearning for and waiting for. So he takes Christ in his hand, and that's why I posted that picture in the group. He takes up Christ in his hand and he, you know, he prays this amazing prayer, you know, to the Lord, Lord, you can dismiss your servant now in peace because I've I have seen your salvation, the light to night and the Gentiles, and your glory for your people Israel. And so the whole theme of light, and that's why today is also known as candle mass, where we, you know, bless the special candles that we use. And will you be used tomorrow for the great feast of St. Blaise for the blessing of the throats? And so the, and the candles represent the light of Christ because Simeon is now embracing the light that has entered human history in this most intense way in the person of Jesus Christ. And, and the culmination of God's great plan for creation and for history and, and, for, and for us and for our own personal stories. And so this light has entered the temple and this is it. Jesus is the light. You know, St. John's gospel is full of this image of light because light enlightens the darkness. It, it casts darkness out. It, it brings 
it brings new vision to our eyes because with light we could see things more clearly and this is christ you know, he's brought the light so that we could see things more clearly because we've lost our way with sin and we can see the path more clearly now through him he's brought us grace to illuminate our minds to transform it to communicate to us the secrets of his father and the great mysteries of of the world and what lays ahead in heaven and the whole path to heaven all these things jesus has revealed more definitively and so and of course, as Father Dominic Jenkinson said in that quote that I posted around there in the in the group, the Hartwig Troops, is that every time we go to Holy Communion, we are like Simeon and Anna, you know, receiving the the salvation of our of our of our life in Christ. That we're receiving the great light of of God. That when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, He has come now to enlighten our minds in that deep moment of communion with Him in the host. 